My interview with Jon Stewart of The Daily Show today uh, elicited a trenchant critique from him about the 24-hour cable news world. Um, it also let me get some stuff off my chest. You think of it differently, but I think a lot of people who watch mm -hmm. your show and who watch cable news think of what we do as not not being that different, which sucks for me because I used to be the sort of <laughs> mi mildly amusing person right, talking, right, right, right. like using humor to tell the story of the, right. the wasteful F-35 second engine on that fighter jet. And right. now I'm the person trying to be John Stewart and something? sucking. I love that F-35. Yeah, that, <laughs> that wasteful engine bit, that killed him. Yeah. You know, it used to be my bit. That's ahead. Please stay with us. I always feel like I don't care where it comes from. If it's right, it's right. Right. But that's like that, that's an earned authority that I think is difficult to have when the environment is so polarizing. So then, how do you what, how do you deal with stuff that people believe that just isn't true? Like on you on, cannot you cannot control crazy. But on so here on Iraq, right? The okay. Bush accepted the Delphi report and everything, saying that there were no weapons of mass destruction. Right. And he admitted it, and he changed his rationales for the war in response to that finding and everything. Well, and, he again like. Did he change it or did he just started say, talking it? about other other reasons? They went out with good. four rationales for the war. <clears throat> now I agree with you. The main one was fear. The main one was Colin Powell was he was waving anthrax. Yeah. When he was down at the UN, he wasn't waving freedom juice. He right. was waving anthrax, and I right. and I and I get that. But there were four rationales, and they probably did that to provide themselves a certain amount of cover. There's no question that they ranked one of them this. But even in the Dulfer report, when he said. For instance, the, the, you guys did it on the show. Well, Saddam Hussein was actually trying to get around sanctions and get. I don't know if you remember this. The UN the, oil for food. The program. UN he oil was for food. Gaming program. the system. Gaming yes. the system, right? But if you follow that soundbite for another 15 seconds, he does say to reconstitute his weapons program. So that he could get money, so that he could use that money to, to reconstitute, reconstitute his weapons program. So he was. Right. I, now again. I see it in your eyes, you're like, but that's horse, but whatever, but right. all I'm saying is, it is there, it's not as black and white. You know, I think, but when, I, when I look at the left, okay. the left always says, we're not black and white. I didn't like Bush because he was so black and white, and there's not nuance. Do you think that the left ever suffers from that same myopia? I think bad arguments exist everywhere, yeah. So why not just do bad arguments? Why be... You are who you are, and I think you're a person that doesn't like bad arguments. I'm trying to pursue bad arguments wherever I find them. But can I, let me finish yeah, yeah. this point about Bush and WMDs. Right. Bush accepted that Saddam wasn't pursuing weapons of mass destruction, that he changed the way that he talked about the war, I think. Yeah, I don't know if he it, accepted to, to it. Well, I, think he, I think he He didn't was like, dispute the report when it came out. Yeah, but I think they were like, yeah, I was really sad we didn't find any. Yes, that's I mean, definitely I, true. I got, the, I got the sense that he was like, yeah, I'm too bad that report didn't find the weapons that I knew were there. But now he's back in his book to saying Saddam was pursuing weapons of mass destruction. That's, right. He says, he declares that as if it is fact. And it's mm -hmm. just not true. And it's not even, it's not even it's an It's true assertion. depending on where you start the pursuit. In other words, Before is my son one? pursuing his car? Yes, my son very much wants a car. Now he's six. Six. <laughs> so he doesn't have a job yet. But he is pursuing a car. He's got to wait a while. Yeah. And a lot of things are going to have to happen. Do, do you get what I'm saying? Like, I get that that's a, a manipulation, yeah. but it is also, in some ways, a subtle narrative manipulation to to just dismiss that. To, but it is, he's, use, as he's, a news be, he's person, doing, he's as doing a, it on purpose to make people think that the war in Iraq was justified because of weapons of mass destruction. You wouldn't say Saddam was pursuing WMD and the world is safer, really, safer because he's Do you think he really gone. believes the world is safer without Saddam Hussein, even if he wasn't pursuing weapons of mass destruction? Do you think I he's, believe he thinks the world is safer, but I can't, yeah. I don't think he believes the world is safer because Saddam was pursuing weapons of mass destruction, because he wasn't. And so... Right. But that's, again, like, that's, that's a belief. That's what you believe. But I don't know that, you know, I don't know the guy. I, I'm the same way about his arguments. I do think he believes Saddam Hussein was dangerous and a madman and had weapons of mass destruction. And the fact that we couldn't find him just means that he had taken, you know, an asthma recess and was just waiting till he could do it again because we were watching him. I, I just, so he, I disagree with the idea that it is because one is truly dishonest and borderline evil. And I guess that's where 
I, I get the point. Like, I'm trying to wrap around my head about the idea that someone who would say you could waterboard isn't evil. And that's where I have to go back to like, okay, Franklin Delano Roosevelt interned 120,000 Japanese Americans. Was he evil? I, you know, uh, uh, I think you have to examine your own orthodoxy before, you know, you can feel comfortable. But let's really try and fight on the most precise and proportional terms we can. Okay. If possible. And on waterboarding, yeah. Bush in his book says... Is that what's next? He didn't just, <laughs> he didn't Is just say... Is that what happens that. now? Oh my yeah. God, what happens to me now? <laughs> he didn't just say... He says yeah. in his book, he He's didn't just say, it. yes, waterboard him. He, he said, in, his, in his writing of himself, said, damn right, damn right, waterboard the guy. I know. I don't... I don't... Um, I mean, it's hard for me to believe... Uh, that he did that. He says that's what he did. But what yeah, that means is that the people who are arguing that waterboarding slash torture is a bad thing lost the argument, and it's now a political asset to brag about having waterboarded. I kind of think they were always like that. I never got the sense that there was a, a sense of shame. I always thought there was a sense of legal maneuvering. Yeah. I never thought they felt like they were covering it up because they thought it was a bad idea or it would paint them as evil. They just didn't want to get nailed for it. I, I, I think that was it, or they wanted to figure out a way to do it. Now, this comes to the next part, though. What is their intention? Is his intention truly to save American lives? Does that justify everything? Well, maybe it doesn't. Where do you draw the line, then? Why don't they just waterboard everybody? A lot of people get shot in gang violence in the city. Why not waterboard gang members? You know, then you get into all these other arguments, but if the place that you start from is he's an evil man who did that to lie to us so that he could take gratuitous pleasure in his own uh, masculinity, like, or whatever it is, like, that, that does... No, but that's... I mean, nobody's... Right. I'm not saying that. Nobody's right. saying that. Right, and that was... But that's an example of, of, again, pushing it too far, but... People, that's what people do. They take things and they go into the next realm. But I don't, I just don't think that, that I don't think do that I here. do that. I mean, I can't speak for everybody here, but I don't think that, and I am definitely part of the conflictinator. I'm definitely part of this whole machine, that's prime right. time and the whole bit. Right. But I don't, right. I don't, I think that the criticism of George Bush on waterboarding is a precise criticism. I don't think it's this guy is an evil monster. I think it is that was wrong for the country and he shouldn't be defending it. Yeah, I don't it's, get the sense yeah. that that's. I don't get the sense that the argument is as passive as that, but okay, that's a fair point. Yeah. I, I think that it's somewhere in between. I think that the argument generally has not been, this is wrong for the country and it has overstepped a certain line in the thing. I think it was a little little more... Uh, well, it's impassioned, emo- certainly. I mean, mm, yeah. this is wrong for the country. I'm happy to scream it if that makes it, if that makes it I, less I, of a strong I, I would case. suggest that it wasn't necessarily just, this is wrong for the country, but that you're a bad man. I don't think that... I don't. I th- I think that you are. I think that you are glossing over the, the gray areas in a way that isn't fair. Maybe. That could very well be, he says. Or, <laughs> yeah, there's more. Stay with us. More of my interview with John Stewart ahead. <laughs> 